Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here of GouletPens.com here with the one and only John Lane of Pilot Pen Corporation of America. And he has been so gracious to shoot not one but two videos with us on this trip. Very special ask on our part. Um, but we've never done a themed Q&A with a guest before. So we thought that would be kind of fun. This is Q&A number 262, if all goes to plan. And uh, you know, John, I really appreciate you, be, appreciate you being here. Um, it's my pleasure, Brian. I had nothing else to do this afternoon, so I thought, well, you know what? Better way to do, spend some time with Brian than to do a Q&A and to answer some of your questions. Exactly. So we're going to put John in the hot seat today with some pilot questions. But before we get to the questions that you all have asked us, uh, we have some new stuff to talk about, which we don't always have the ability to say that when we have Correct. other things going on. But uh, you have with you a sample of the new limited edition 2019 Vanishing Point, which I'm super pumped about because it's an amazing color. And this is called Tropical Turquoise. Uh, this is the first I've ever been able to see it. And it looks really good, I gotta say. You know, not every Vanishing Point has been maybe our first choice that we may have gone with. Right. But this one is pretty strong. This is our, our creative design team did an amazing job on this, as did production planning in Japan. Because when we come up with an idea, Creative Services pretty much just does this on a template. And we send it to Japan, mm -hmm. and we'll see what they can do. And this one came back almost identical to what we wanted. That's awesome. So we're pretty excited about this. Normally we get 800 uh, in. This year we're getting 940 in. There's 2019 that have been made mm -hmm. and we were able to uh, uh, coerce another 140 out of our European division. So I'm really looking forward to it. It comes in the usual box with the coordinating color mm -hmm. and the instructions, cartridge cap and cartridge are underneath. And it'll retail. And that's kind of cool, like the box you kind of, what is it, you fold it down yeah. and then you pull it out. Pull it out. Yeah. Ta -da. And it normally, this is a sample, but it would normally have all the stuff in there. It's pretty cool. Priced at two fifty seven fifty, the same as the cross lines was last year. Nice. And uh, it will be out mid September. And there are two thousand and nineteen of them total. Yes. And like you said, there's nine forty or so available in the, the North American market right. at least. Very cool. Well, I'm excited about that. Andy's got to go run that because we've got to take pictures before John leaves, um, <laughs> so that we have them up on the website, which we should by the time that. Uh, well, when can we talk about it? Yeah, I guess we can talk about it when this video publishes, huh? <laughs> Otherwise, we, I don't know what we're doing here. Next week, the rest of the world will know about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, and then we got some other new stuff that's uh, coming on the way, too. So, uh, what do you want to talk about first? The um, silvers? The, yeah, the silvers. We have two new silver patterns coming out, and they're kind of neat. They're not of a an animal or of a design. Uh, they're based off some old Japanese designs. Um, one is a it looks kind of like they're, they're old doors in Japanese houses were were very intricate and and just had pretty much just little squares everywhere. So that that's coming, and then the other one is based on a pattern of a piece of silk. Mm -hmm. And these everything that we're talking about will be out in and around first week of October. Yeah. And what prices are these ones going to uh, be? These at? are going to be six hundred eighty. Uh, okay. Be available in the fountain in fine and medium. And so these are kind of like those premium range uh, pilot pens. Because right. typically when you start to get into these six, seven hundreds, that's where it starts to transition over into Namiki territory, right? Correct. Now, do you know why this is still pilot instead of Namiki? Is it because it's not Maki A, basically? Um, we decided some years ago that when, when Namiki came over here in 1994, everything was stamped Namiki, mm -hmm. um, even vanishing points. Right, I uh, that. But the rest of the world knows the vanishing point as the pilot capitalist. Mm -hmm. And so Japan was doing two runs and printing them for it. Mm -hmm. So there were upcharges involved, and so we just kind of decided that, that, you know, let's put Pilot on everything because Pilot has made fine writing instruments since the mm -hmm. 40s. And we'll leave Namiki on the Machier because Namiki is the name of our founder, and so we put his name on our best pens. There you go. Yeah. That makes sense. And I don't think, you know, we've talked about, like, the U.S., Europe, all that kind of stuff. I mean, Pilot is a rather large company. Yes, it Probably is. Probably the largest of any in the fine writing world. Um, maybe except for Montblanc, right? So like you're dealing with lots of different markets, right? Correct. So Correct. even Pilot Corporation of America is the biggest of any of the distributors in the pen world that I'm aware of mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. So, um, you know, when we're talking about these types of things, there's a lot of people involved, a lot of decisions to be made, branding, marketing and stuff to be right. considered right. around all this stuff. So appreciate those insights. Um, so those are pretty cool. We've had the Animal Series 
of the, um, Sterling. the Sterlings before. Uh, and so we're excited to see these in kind of a new pattern. Yeah, there are so eight cool. in the um, in the animal or, or design series, and then mm -hmm. these are these are pretty these are pretty nice. Yeah, I like these a lot. And they have yeah. an 18 karat uh, rhodium plated nib, uh, like the other ones do. That's good. And these are nice writing nibs, inlaid nibs too, which you don't see that much on different pens. Right, so right. it's it's really kind of a cool pattern. Great writing pens too. Uh, and then we have another new pen that's going to be coming out. The, uh, the it's called Ishimi, which is it's roughly translated in, in Japanese as stepping stones and so the pattern looks it's a very faint looks like walkways all over the pens. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be available in black, blue, burgundy and forest green uh, with a retail of under $800. Uh, fine, medium and broad. Very Originally cool. we were going to do it as sort of a limited release but I did have some samples for a while, did some events and they were very well received mm -hmm. and so um, they're a great writing pen uh, that has gold trim and that will be out in October as well. And this is really the same base of a Yukari pen of what you would get with like a higher end. Right, it's got a, got a flat top and mm -hmm. there is some lacquering involved in it. So anytime you can get a lacquered piece for under a thousand dollars, it's a it's You're it's doing a good, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And the, and the pattern is very subtle, but again, it was kind of a nice way to find out that there is a story behind it and, mm -hmm. and uh, so it's stepping stones. Very cool. And these are stones like you would see. I remember when I went to Tokyo, they, I was in the the um, uh, the Emperor's uh, you know park, and right. there were stepping stones just like yeah. that, that kind of look exactly like that. And same thing, they had a tea house in the center of the park that had the old rice paper doors with exactly the squares. And so I'm like, I'm now seeing exactly where all this stuff is coming from. Right. So that's pretty cool. So um, those are cool. And then we got one more new thing that's going to be coming out, uh, which is an Emperor, which is does not come out every day. Uh, so I'm pretty pumped about this one too. This is the limited edition that we come out with every year. This is called the Shoki, which is a, and Google the story because it's a really cool story. Um, it's an ancient Chinese character, wards off bad spirits. And the design is an emperor. It's a vest model, meaning it doesn't have a clip. So the entire story is wrapped around That's cool. the barrel and the, and the cap. Uh, 99 pieces were made worldwide. Uh, 20 are coming here to the US. Okay. Um, It'll retail for around ninety five hundred dollars, and it's it's a so great start saving story. your lunch money, right? Yeah, yeah. Start saving <laughs> your lunch money. It's just a great story behind Very it. So, cool. yeah, awesome. And you've seen a lot of these, you've seen a lot of these Machia pens come out over the years, haven't you? At this point, I have, I have. L looking, I, I printed some literature out for you, and just looking at some of the past limited editions and, and overall pieces, uh, there are not very many that I don't like. So that's true. Yeah. There's a lot of thought process that goes into the design and in the, in the production planning in, in Hrotska, and um, they're pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. All right, so that takes care of new stuff. Um, do have some questions for you. We got more questions than we're going to be able to ask, and I did prep John a little bit ahead of time just so that we could prepare, because Q&A is not always he, winging it. It's, he had it's to clean up some prepared. language in some of them. I did, yeah. John got John got a taste of some of the unfiltered questions that we get from you all. Um, so I will be uh, summarizing some just a little bit, uh, but I do have a selection of questions here uh, that we can talk about. So first off, thanks for being a good sport and taking some of these. Well, I may take uh, the Fifth Amendment sure. on these too. So yeah. well, that's okay too. You know what? That's all right. And I may insert some follow-up questions in some of these too. Okay. Um, so I've never done a, I haven't really done a Q&A in an interview style before. This is different. Normally it's just ramblings off the top of my head that are happening. But I suspect there'll still be some rambling involved. Well, you know, you kind of know what you're getting into with episode 262. Yes, yes, I can imagine. <laughs> All right, so starting out, um, we got a question for somebody on Twitter, not a wizard. Uh, asks, how do the lower end Machier pens compare to the normal non Machier pilot pen in terms of features, not necessarily just the artwork? Well, you have to understand that when something comes out of any of our factories, it's made to be written with. So the same quality control goes into a G2 retractable that actually goes into an Emperor. Hmm. Um, the artists, the factory people, they all expect you to write with these pens and they want them to have. Pilot believes that we have the greatest writing instruments in the world, and mm. it's that's the amount of care that goes into it. There you go. So, in terms of features, I'm, I'm interpreting the question to be like, okay, if you have a, you know, take a hundredth anniversary Seven Gods pen, mm -hmm. Yukari style, forty-eight hundred dollars, right? So, what's the difference between this and, you know, a Pilot Vanishing Point, for example? You know, a hundred and, you know, eighty-five dollars. Well, you say. have some. I mean, these are set aside. I, mean, I think we're going to touch on some Machia questions in a bit, but sure. these are 
there's a whole different buyer for these. Uh, although these are written with, some people do write with them on an everyday basis. But there's really um, heavy artwork in there. Yeah, but this is, yeah. I mean, the Vanishing Point that's been out for over 50 years is still probably the most functional fountain pen on the market, mm -hmm. judging by your sales and everybody else's sure. sales on it. I love this pen. Um, this is, not only is this a starter pen, but this is an everyday pen. Um, you know, the nice thing about it is you can fly with this pen because there's a door that shuts over the nib. And when I do events, I usually leave one that's really messy on the inside so the consumer can see that, that the ink does not come out. Mm -hmm. So from a function standpoint, this is the most functional fountain pen we have. Yeah. Both of these pens have 18 karat gold nibs. Mm -hmm. um, we have steel, 14 karat, and 18 gold, 18 karat gold. Mm -hmm. um, and it just depends on what you're using it with. Uh, the demonstrator pens are a certain collector, uh, or not collector, but user. The custom 823 we sell to a lot of attorneys. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. People that write all day because mm -hmm. they know that it's not going to run out on ink. Um, you know, the Falcon is made for. F originally, it was designed for for calligraphy, yep. but now that's turned into an everyday pen. Right. Um, so our pens are all made to use. It just depends on who's using them and what you're using them for. Yeah, and there's specific features like you mentioned the 823, super popular pen, especially in the last couple of years, yep. has gained in a lot of popularity. Um, some of that there's some technology in the vacuum, you know, filling mechanism that's a little more complicated. Right. But even the vanishing point, honestly, for what it is, it's a pretty complicated pen to engineer. There's well over 20 pieces in this pen. Wow. And this is why it's not been knocked off by our Chinese brothers, is that in most of it's still assembled by hand. Mm -hmm. And so they're not going to take the time to do that, and they're not going to put out a pen of this quality. There are other retractable fountain pens that are very good. Mont Blanc has one. Um, Biscani has one. Mm -hmm. And other people have tried over the years, but this is the, the go-to pen. Sure. Well, and other retractables I've seen price-wise are way higher too. Right. So and yeah. Currently, this is at 185 and still considered a, a bargain for what you, what you get in this pen. I mean, it's a great writing pen. Mm -hmm. um, if you like the matte black, which is our most popular color of it, for sure. Um, and just the overall popularity of it um, is. I mean, we sell thousands of these every year. Yeah, that's awesome. No, I mean, no, no doubt. Um, so to kind of sum up, you know, not a wizard's question here. You know, definitely there's some features you can talk about here and there, um, but really I think a lot of it is going to have to do with the artwork. That is right. the biggest factor in what you're getting in with these Machia pens. So when you really kind of take that component out of it, um, that's pretty much uh, <laughs> not much of a question left, I think, <laughs> uh, but still good to talk about it a little bit. Yeah. All right. Another question from Twitter. This is some from Vrix Tweets. What's the deal with the pilot... Mayu or Murex or M90, uh, are those completely out of print or is there some way y'all could get these in stock someday? Uh, the last several times I've been in Japan, and this was the M90 over, over in Japan, it was called the Mew. Um, when this came out, uh, we really didn't know quite what to make of it because I had never <laughs> seen uh, a, a, a nib it's an in integrated, integrated nib. Integrated yeah. into it's a barrel. in the body of the pen. There's no separate nib from the body of the pen, and which I think is one of the coolest oh, it is. pens it's ever made. And it writes really well. And I'm not big on steel nibs, but it does write very well. So yeah. they gave these to us, and it was a limited edition. Um, we ended up selling over 1,400 of them, um, and like literally overnight, mm. they, were, they were gone. Now, if you see them on eBay, they're they're oh yeah, well, close to five hundred dollars. Four five hundred dollars, easy. Yeah. Yeah, and so the well, last. I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for mine. <laughs> I'll tell you later. Um, the last couple of times that I've been there, I have asked, and the the thing with this is that the manufacturing costs were very high, and yeah. I've been pushing them for a black mat in '90. Mm. And yes, please. Yes, they still have not said no totally, and I fully expect one day, hopefully, we will have another one out. But but yes, to answer the question, these are gone. Yeah, and they've been gone for a while, right? Like this was uh, uh, probably twenty years. No, probably ten. Ten years? Yeah, okay, probably ten. Okay, but I mean now, in, w when I go to pen shows and stuff like that, you know, those who have this pen, they're like peacocking around, yeah. like I've got an M90 yeah. or I've got a, you know, whatever it is, Murex. Um, all similar body styles, right? It was just the design that was different on these three that we're talking about here. Yeah, and yours, um, it's got the M90 on it. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. Yeah. Very, very cool. So I'll 
officially put my word out there once again, pretty much every time John comes here. I'm like, so John, are we getting an M90 yet? He knows what he's getting in for. Um, but anyway, I think it would be great if they were to make one. So you can pass that along. Maybe a Goulet blue one. Hey, now we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass that along. Awesome. All right, this is a question that uh, I had when I was asking my team. Uh, so, you know, with Machier, are people actually using this, these pens or are they collecting them for investments? Obviously, you're getting into a realm of artwork, really expensive stuff. How many of these people, because you do a lot of different shows, you're all over the place, you're really connected with the, the collectors who are buying these things. What, I don't know, do you have like a ratio in mind or maybe just general thoughts on like, you know, what's the type of person that's buying these really high-end pens? Um, I've had collectors come in and buy them, take them home, open the box, look at them, put them back in the box and put them up on the shelf and not look at them for a couple years. Hmm. Um, had one gentleman come into an event and he bought the Emperor Owl, which retails for 8400 And when he went and paid for it, he came back and he said, show me how to fill it. Hmm. And he uses the Emperor Owl as his everyday pen. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, there is a gentleman who bought the Seven Gods box set and he didn't want to write with them. So he bought an individual set so he could ink them. Wow. So um, 14 total pens, yeah. 100th anniversary pens. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, um, and then others, I mean, the, the artists, when they, when they paint them, they expect you to write with them because even an emperor, when you don't post a cap, it's very well balanced and it's an exceptional nib. Even in a, even in a lady's hand, it's still well balanced and they yes. expect you to write with them. They don't want to hear that they're, they put them away. But some people are just superstitious like that. Sure. Others will put them in custom showcases and look at them. Um, yeah, more like you would if you would like a frame a nice painting, if you, you right. know, so that you view it as artwork, functional art. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some collectors come around and they've got three or four Yukari pieces, and mm -hmm. they're all inked, different color inked, and, wow. they're, and they're ready to go because they are made to be written with. Mm -hmm. But again, you get the occasional collector who just won't write with it at all. Yeah. Which is a shame because th uh, our nibs are probably, I think I'm a little prejudiced, but I think they're the best in the world. <laughs> are you prejudiced? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry to my good friends at Sailor and Pelican, but yeah, no, our, our, our pens, are, our nibs are the best in the world. I think they're pretty great too. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I, uh, you know, we are, we've been selling the Miki, the Miki, the, the Makie stuff for three, four years now. Mm -hmm. um, and we are still learning like who is, you know, the, the Miki collector um, and, you know, we're probably a little biased here because we started out with $4 pens and $10 pens and they're all meant to be written with. So we tend to attract a lot of people who are, are users and writers. Like we have a blue ink splatter as our logo for a reason because right. it's like, it's okay to get a little messy and get your hands inky. And you can see. Yeah, exactly. Brian was, Brian was doing as I was inking morning. up my pen today, yeah. got a little ink on the fingers and that's okay. It's like a badge of honor sort of thing. So I think it we is. tend to maybe attract more of the people who are using it. So I appreciate those insights because, um, I mean, pretty much everybody I know, they are, they are using their pens, um, which is really awesome to see. I, I think once, you know, you're sort of afraid to, okay, you just paid $4,800 for this and, okay, you know, how do I, how do I ink this? And, okay, okay, it looks so nice and clean and I don't want to get the feed dirty. Right. And then once you make the jump and you start to write with it, you're pretty happy that you decided to, exactly. to ink it up. Exactly. And, and to me personally, like I have, more pens that I could possibly ever use on a daily basis. So for me, I kind of make a conscious choice of which pen do I want to appreciate as I'm writing with it because as I have it out and around, it's on my desk and I'm writing with it, like I'm enjoying that as art more than I right. would if I just had it away somewhere. And some people do, I have sold them to people that know nothing about pens, but they like Japanese art. Yeah, I was, I was curious about that. Like, do you have people that would buy one of these as a fountain pen, not even knowing how to ink up a pen? Like, I mean, like, like the person with the owl, like, had they never inked a fountain pen before? Well, with the with the emperor, or just that particular with pen. the emperor, it's an eye drop fill, so you don't it's a different. you don't know where to ink it because there's well, when you finally take the top the, the nib off, okay, there you can see it, but then they don't know if you even you, know where to take it apart. That you got to screw it on the bottom. You can't even tell where the seams are on right. the pen because it's so right. seamless. And with an emperor, it's it's about a dropper and a half full to get full up and you open up a little back, uh, open the back up a little bit, a little air in. It's fine. Yeah, there you go. Nice. All right. Uh, John S. on Facebook asks, does the FA nib on the custom 912, which we have here in the U.S., 
um, or the 823, which we don't have in the U.S., but is available in Japan. Um, does that compare? How does that compare with the nibs on the Falcon? Because it's called the Falcon nib, mm -hmm. right? But it's FA is what it says on the nib. But it's not the same nib as what's on the Pilot Falcon. Um, so how do those compare? And then does it come in different widths, like the Falcon right. does? Uh, first of all, I think it's more flexible than the Falcon. Um, doing events and having some idle time, you play with things, with, and I think that the FA nib is much more flexible than the Falcon nib is very flexible. This, I think, is, is a little bit more. Yeah, um, I agree with that. The, um, and you bring up the A23. I have asked Japan to consider putting the FA nib on the A23 because mm -hmm. both of those pens combined would, would be That'd quite be the a pen. knockout punch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the rise in popularity of the A23. Right. Um, do you think there's any concern about like too much demand? Like I imagine at some point they hit capacity issues and, and certain things, well, either, either with nibs or with pens or something. Is that a factor at all? I suspect that the 912 with the FA nib would probably go away because... With the A23? Yeah, you mean, yeah. Well, you've, got the, you've got a CON70 in here, whereas with it's the a great converter. Right, yeah. but the A23, the entire barrel is a reservoir. So if you've got this nib on, on that pen, well, now you got the smoke A23 too, so you still get that yeah. black look, which right. is pretty cool. So that's that's a, a project in the hopper, and it's always encouraging when Japan does not say no. They haven't said yes, but they haven't said no. Okay. In the, they're just the, thinking about it. The last couple of times, well, as as you mentioned, it is being made because yeah. it's a different size nib in each pen. One yeah. is a 10 nib, one's a 15 nib, and so it is being made. They're not buying those, and because they can't put them together. Right. So. Hopefully, it'll come through. That's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. Absolutely. And then the other question was, does it come in different widths? As far as I'm aware, the Falcon nib is is a single width. Or, sorry, the, the FA nib is a single line width. That's right. Like, there's not no. different widths that you can no. get with that. No, the Custom 912 line is strictly for the odd nibs. Like, Brian's got a stub here. Okay, there's a mm -hmm. Music, there's a Waverly. Mm -hmm. We do have it in fine and extra fine, and I just brought over the soft, a fine medium, which is a really smooth writing pen. But then there's a, the coarse and the post, and there's like 14 different nibs that just wouldn't make a lot of sense to right. bring over. The so. coarse is pretty cool, though. I don't think <laughs> yeah. it would be enough to warrant, you know, bringing them over, but it's, a, it's basically like a triple broad. It's so wet. Yeah. It's like writing with a Sharpie, almost. I mean, send in your request to, to Brian, and if we can get an order for four or 500 of them, we'll do it. <laughs> four or 500? Okay, maybe not, <laughs> um, but we'll see. Um, but hey, fingers crossed on an FA nib on the A23. Yeah. That'd be pretty rad. Now, if I had my dream, since we're talking, you know, why not? I would do the smoke with rhodium trim with an FA nib. That'd be pretty rad. Okay, so my dream is to bring a clear barrel with the rhodium trim. Ooh, okay, okay. Why not a translucent blue as well while we're at it, like the Custom 74? Bring that over too, rhodium trim. I like where we're going with this, John. Purple, maybe we do a tr uh, you know, tropical turquoise. <laughs> maybe we put an FA nib and an M90. Okay, we're jumping the shark now, aren't we? Okay, fair enough, that's all right. It's now documented what all of our hopes and dreams are for these pens, but that's fair. All right, um, so let's, let's take a question from Amy on Facebook. She says, the click mechanism for my blue carbon ask, so this is a vanishing point we're talking about here, uh, just fell apart some time ago. Can it be repaired? If so, can I do it or does it need to go back to pilot? So basically kind of like what's the warranty process or policy for pilot Namiki? Um, Namiki is guaranteed for life. That means all Maki pens have a lifetime guarantee. Um, pilot products, it's one year. Uh, because if something is going to go wrong with one of our pens, it, it will happen within a year. On a vanishing point, really the only thing that go wrong with it is that door could get stuck, and that doesn't happen very often at mm -hmm. all. Um, Amy, I would send the pen down to uh, Pilot Repair in Jacksonville, 3855 Regent Boulevard. Uh, our technician there is, is pretty good, and if it can be fixed, she'll fix it, and then she'll clean it all up for you and send it back. There you go. And we've got that information on the product page on our site and the FAQs on our pilot warranty as well. Um, but should she try repairing it herself is the question. Um, pilot's policy, and it's a worldwide policy, is if, if, as a consumer, if you start messing with the pen, the warranty's off. So mm -hmm. I'd rather have you send it down and let our technician take a look at it yeah. and, and do that. Fair enough. 
I mean, that makes sense too, especially you were talking about the pen's got 20 different components in it. Yeah. That who knows what is going on in there. Yeah. So it'd be pretty easy to kind of mess something up, especially on, on a vanishing point right. in that particular pen. Um, fair enough. Okay. Awesome. All right. This is a question that, um, believe it or not, we had quite a few people ask about the Pilot Con 40 converter. And I was a good sport. I was like, hey, John, we're giving you some feedback about the Con 40 uh, ever since it came out. And I uh, wanted to put him in the hot seat a little bit, but I want to be respectful too. I, I, I mentioned something about it. taking the Fifth Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the general vibe is, hey, the, the Pilot Con 40 leaves something to be desired for a lot of people. What's the deal? Is Pilot aware that the sentiment around the Con 40 is not 100% everybody loves it? So, this can you a, say anything officially about yes, that? Yes, I can. And <laughs> so the Con 40 was kind of pushed on us by Japan. They wanted to replace the Con 50. The Con 50, to be honest with you, it wasn't all that great either. Because the problem with that, when you've got a vanishing point, you, there is no room here. So it's not yeah. like we could put a Con 70 in it and solve everybody's problems. It's tough, yeah. So what I tell a lot of people, if you're going all the trouble of using bottled ink, and you, you can't, I can't even fill the Con 40. I couldn't fill the Con 50 either. <laughs> uh, that's just you just can't. It can be done. It just takes it, a few turns. It can turns be done. And it takes some turns. So that, that's actually why I have ink on my fingers right now. Is because I was filling the Con 40 and I had to, you know, do it a few times and then I touched the rim <laughs> and the bottle and, that, and that's what that was. Is I touched the bottle. It's Con Pecky, by the way. Oh, you know, I, so I thought. Well, it looked you, like, you thought it. You you know. No, you just looked at it. That and you looked said like Suki Yo to me. Oh no, it's Con Pecky. Okay. I can, I can, I can. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> There really is nothing that we can do to improve that because you can't get any sort of piston mechanism in there. Sure. So it's got to be a twist, and, and the fact that there is just no room at all. Mm -hmm. So as layman as excuse as it is, I tell consumers if they're going all the trouble using bottled ink, get yourself an eyedropper, mm -hmm. turn the Con 40 or Con 50 over, fill it up, put the nib back on top, and you're ready to go. Fair enough. Because it holds ink. It's just a problem of getting ink into it. Yeah. And It yes, doesn't seem to get a good seal, you know? Once like when it's when you're first drawing it into it, it's hard that's to right. draw the ink into it. That's right, and that's very difficult to do. I can only get a couple, three drops of it, mm -hmm. and Japan does know this. But okay. then again, there's nothing you can really do because there just is no. You know, oh, there you go. There's just no room in here. Yeah. And so there really can't be anything done. And I see you know, kind of, oh, That's okay. Yeah, it's that just, one's not inked up. Yeah. No, but it's it's very difficult to do. So again, I would just get yourself an ink dropper. Fill it up a little bit over the rim, put it back on, make sure it's sealed, and you're ready to go. Fair enough. But please continue to pass along the feedback to I will. Japan. That uh, I, I feel like as many things they've engineered well, and I'm not I'm not one to complain much. I love Pilot. It just seems like this is one thing that like could be done better. And I've passed that along, and I will again. Awesome. I think that's all we can ask at this point. Um, wonderful. So. Um, I won't grill you anymore on that one because I want you to be nice to me and come back. That wasn't all that bad, though. <laughs> I'm being very nice. <laughs> Believe me, one of the questions that I received verbatim from my customers, why is a Con 40 so terrible? Uh, so I kind of summarized all these up. Oh, my goodness. So anyway. It's always right. fun to re read the fine pen blogs. Yes, exactly. It's, it's fun to get direct feedback from people. Well, I'm sure you get it when you go to shows and stuff, too. Yes, I do. Uh, <laughs> you, you get to hear it in person. I've had pens waved at me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Has anyone ever thrown one at you? In jest. <laughs> and I have had people come up to me and, and say, okay, and they would count 40 and say, okay, I can't fill this. Can you? I said, yes, I can. So I bring out my eyedropper, fill it up, hand it back to her. I said, see, that wasn't all that bad. <laughs> Well, there you go. Living by your own advice, I guess. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, all right. I wanted to end kind of on a high note here. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I, wanted, I thought about just ending it there. I was like, that's going to be kind of a downer. Um, but no. So uh, this is a question from our team. Uh, what's been some of your favorite Machiers over the years? Because you've seen more of them than pretty much anybody else. So um, what, what of all of them have sta really stands out to you? I have a lot, actually, that I like. There's only been a couple that I really haven't, but production planning does such a great job with all these designs. Mm -hmm. I mean, my all-time favorite is the Great White Shark. That's a cool one. Um, that was just amazing. Um, the Polar Bear was really cool because it came in a box with a glass top with the pen sitting in it, and it looked like the Polar Bear was sitting on an iceberg. Oh, that's cool. Um, that's one thing, too. Besides the pens, you get with these limited editions, you get presentation boxes Oh yeah. that are... Um, pretty intricate. In fact, one of the collectors 
lives in New York and he has no room and so he doesn't want the box. He just takes the pen and leaves the box and sometimes these boxes are valued thousand dollars. Wow. But the Great White Shark is my favorite. The first one we had was the, the White Tiger of Asia. That was really cool. That mm -hmm. was our first limited in 1996. Mm -hmm. And we've had a seahorse, a peacock, um, tokies. Um, I mean, the, the anniversary pen, we were talking about that earlier today, the anniversary emperor with Mount Fuji with crushed quail egg oh, shells. That one was cool. That I was hoping we wouldn't sell that so I could somehow finagle Rachel into letting me keep that one. And never, unfortunately, it never would have happened. Did not stick around no. long. Um, the panda was good. That's <laughs> what's where we got the idea to put a panda on the Sterling um, series. Uh, the owl had uh, um, abalone eyes. That's cool. Uh, but the shark is still my all time favorite. There you go. Yeah. Good to know. Yep. Awesome. Well, cool. I appreciate you coming in, getting grilled a little bit, John. Hopefully it wasn't, it wasn't, too it wasn't as bad as, as I thought. <laughs> but you had to throw in the Con 40. I had to. I, you know, I would have gotten the brunt end of that one if I hadn't at least brought it up on yeah. video. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're, so, working, we're working on it, but get yourself an eyedropper. Fair enough. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, you can check out a lot more about Pilot uh, and Amiki on GulaPens.com. Uh, thank you, John, for being here. My pleasure. Once again. Right. Can we do a third one today? You know, we can if you want. Okay. We can go on Instagram Live. We can do whatever you want to do. And Andy's our, shaking our, her head. Our, produ our producer's saying no. <laughs> We've been killing Andy this week, <laughs> pumping out videos, so that's good stuff. Anyway, uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for hanging with us on 262 here. Thanks so much for watching, and right on.